Hello everyone. I'm here to talk about TNML, Embedded Machine Learning, and uh, our educational experience in Brazil regarding this subject. Who I am? I'm Marcelo Rovai, and uh, I'm an engineer. I'm a Brazilian living in Chile nowadays. I'm a master in data science, like data science for UDD Chile, and uh, a volunteer professor at uh, UNIFE, Federal University of Tejuba, where I'm teaching the first uh, TNML course for engineering undergrad students in Latin America. But uh, first of all, what is machine learning? What's TNML? Well, TNML is a fast growing field of machine learning, something brand new, where we are, we are mixing three great areas, three major areas of interest, like algorithms, hardware, and software. So it's a novelty and, uh, and, and together bring a lot of uh, challenges uh, for us professors. Well, it, the, the, the important thing about TNML is, is that uh, is we have machine learning, it's part of in artificial intelligence, running, it running on device, running exactly what the things are happen. It's in the, it connected to the physical world. That's very interesting. And the big challenge that we have is that machine learning it works with a very, very, very small amount of uh, power with a small batteries, you know, and uh, in, in devices with, uh, you know, only few kilobytes of memory. This is the big challenge. Besides uh, all the challenge that we can have with such kind of uh, applications, very, very tiny devices, we are... We are, we are, it's possible to find machine learning teeny mail applications everywhere nowadays, like personal assistant that you can see in our home as Alexa, hey Google, in office to you know turn on turn off lights automatically to you know to see if a people is a person is a is there to you know when you press a button to the elevator or or, or use your voice to call elevators doing using both two types of algorithms with audio and, 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 and vision in the industry with, uh, with anomaly detection, you know, we can, we can prevent if a machine is, you know, is running with a problem or not. But not long, only, in, 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 let's say, so not, not only with the simple devices we can, find, we can find TNML. Nowadays, TNML can be found in, in, for example, in several areas in, in the industry, in, and more important, we can find in health industry, in animal sensing. We are seeing today uh, such kind of devices helping to protect elephants in Africa. We are seeing this, this type of devices using in very small, in very, in very small, very small, teeny, you know, equipments like, like uh, you know, smart watches that when you can see if uh, how how is your heart is doing or small devices in your in your brain or here for example you can see it's a great project when the uh, when the researchers in africa uh, is is trying to predict in cholera in huro communal the tap waters it's fantastic okay so facing all the all the challenge regarding tnml uh, and the, regarding you know develop, you know, machine learning that's part of artificial intelligence in very thin devices, you know, with very small amount of memory, it's a lot of challenge. So how we, we teach that? Well, having a very good starting point that was what we have been developed in Harvard Engineering School by Professor VJ and uh, uh, after and uh, the, 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 the mock the course in uh, EDX, when they teach all the TNML uh, applications and the deployment in TNML devices, we, we start from that experience plus what have been developed by uh, uh, Edge Impulse, um, one of the leading the lead, the lead companies in the industry of TNML development. So we put both together and try to teach the students. So we start with the first part of the course, you know, focus in, you know, what is Python, Jupyter Notebook, etc., and all the fundamentals of TNML. But uh, in, in that part, the students could understand how to use frameworks like uh, TensorFlow, you know, how to you, create models, how to, 
to work to, to deal with data sets to clean data sets to understand the data you know the, to run the models to deploy the models inside their computers or mainly using using tools like uh, like a collab from from Google second what we did was once the, the students have the, all the knowledge or the basis about uh, about the frameworks that we use in machine learning in general not a, we're talking really about TNML but more in, in general we start really going deep what means to develop application in TNML world you know all the, all the steps that must must be, be followed and that the edge impulse studio was very important for us in the, this moment because they help the students to very quickly to understand how to capture real data using their cell phones they use they you know using their normal cell phones you know the, the regular smartphones they use the accelerometer and the uh, and the, the microphone inside the the cell phones to capture real data pre-process pre-process the data generate models that they have learned in the first part of the course correct and to deploy in the same the same uh, cell phone all that knowledge we could really go into the to the end of the most important part of the course that was how we can have that model develop you know in a in a, in a bigger machine and you know shrink the code in order that we can put that code inside very 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 small devices and we did this and and the, the important was the students really you know make uh, using their hands you know have the hands dirty you know with the data with the, you know with, with bits and bytes you know, to you know that you can have uh, when the students could could develop several types of different you know uh, applications you know like uh, like uh, word detections like uh, okay google or alexa or vision projects where detecting if a, if a person has a mask or not a mask if a person is not a person movements etc you know that the, the students could real really uh, do this during the during the course w to do that uh, we use a kit a fantastic kit that was developed by arduino harvard people google people for a specific for the edx um, mock tnml course that we also use it in our in our course at uh, at the unifay so what we did with the, the the kids from Italy, you know, receive it to university. We package everything because the COVID, the students was in their homes. They are they 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 were not at the university. So we send the kids to the students. The students could could you know do laboratories, you know, in parallel with the the lectures that the weekly lectures that they have. So they you know they could experiment. They could test. They could exchange ideas uh, among them they could develop a final project you know a very interesting project regarding tnml and including the university what they did they, they when they sent the kids everything was prepared for the students at the end that, that at the end of the course that was now the students put back in the back in the in the, the, the the kids in a in the in the package the original package the original box you know and everything was paid for them to by mail deliver the kit back to the university so the university can use send now for the second the, the course that we have in the, the, the in the next semester but you know better than than me to talk about that let's let's see what one of our 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 best students stephanie can say about hello everyone i'm stephanie Cora coimbra and i'm a student of computer engineering at the university of Itajubá, brazil i'm also doing the tiny ml course so it's an area that is growing so fast and it's extraordinary what we can do with that I fell in love with this AI field, so I certainly will use that on my career. About the requisites to do the course, I had a solid base on statistics and hardware in general, but the university helps to bring closer to us the opportunity to work with machine learning. And with the kit and the material provided by our professor Marcelo, it's been a great experience. That's the kit that was sent to our homes. So we have here uh, an Arduino BLE Sense, uh, a camera, and also a cable to write the code. So it's pretty amazing, right? I felt a need for a deeper knowledge in the Python programming language as I didn't have a good contact with it, but I managed to study on my own and was more than enough to follow the project and the course. So let's continue to make things happen through the world.
Thanks, Estevani. She is a, she's an amazing student. Yeah, really good. Well, the, regarding the course, the course was, was delivery uh, during, during uh, 15 weeks, you know, with a weekly, weekly lectures where the students could learn the theory and also to, to test or to, to try to code during the class with me. And uh, uh, after every class, they received a kind of a quiz, you know, in, in their homes to verify what, if they have learned it or not. So with the, together with an additional readings, you know, some codes that they have to develop, some, some notebooks with some, uh, some projects, like, uh, you know, mo modules to be developed, trained, etc. You know, they, they, they need to deliver every, 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 everything of that for, for a grade for the course. The students, they, they were grouped together and three or four students each and developed several, several projects. It was very nice projects, you know, like, uh, like a COVID detection with cough, uh, fire, fire detection using image, you know, mask or not mask detection, you know, if the movements are correct and during the exercise, physical exercise, etc. So it was really a success and the students loved it to do that. As we said before, the, and, and also the, the Stephanie comment with that, the, uh, because we have students for three main areas of the university, for, com for the, the computer, or the, the, the computer engineering from uh, control and automation, electronics, we have different background. And as Stephanie comment, uh, for example, she didn't know, she, 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 she knew a little, only a little bit about, about the microprocessors and very few about, about the Python, for example. And we have we have uh, one third of the students that have very low knowledge about uh, Arduino, for example, and a lot of students didn't know Python. Half of the students never 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 learned about Python, and the other half uh, never never heard about uh, or very few uh, heard about, for example, uh, uh, TensorFlow. Okay, so that was a big challenge. We have students where ve uh, the great majority. Very, they didn't know TensorFlow or machine learning, what, what we're talking about, and the one third of the students didn't know about, uh, about about microprocessors. Okay, so we put all together. We need to, you know, was 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 a challenge to balance that, and you know what have been developed by the and because again this is the base of this was what have been developed by by Harvard, in the Harvard X uh, course, the NL course was very helpful. And when we, we did the, the postcard survey, we could realize that the students here, all they, they, they have a, it was very, very clear for them that they have a very poor knowledge about the subjects. But at the end of the course, the great majority, you know, I can say 80% of the students, you know, was very pleased with what they have learned and they are preparing to continue to learn more. So this is, this was key. And, and what we are doing now is trying to send this kind of uh, knowledge everywhere in the world. You know? I'm part of an um, a initiative you know, that is led by Dr. Marco Zenaro in the, in the ICTP in Italy, is the Tiny ML 4 d This is an amazing initiative you know, to spread the, the knowledge or the education of a Tiny ML everywhere in the, in the developing world. So, for example, for the first phase of our project, we have selected 20 universities from, you know, more than 16 countries, you know, in Latin America, in Africa, in Asia, that will participate in our first seminar in November. We're talking about, about TML. TML. We are, the idea is to, to, to replicate what we did, not, not of course, in a, in a, in a 15 weeks course, but uh, in a very focus, we use the same kit that we use in the, in the course here in Brazil you know, to, to teach students all over the world. But most important, to have a solid network, academic network, to exchange projects among those countries. This is our goal, okay? And we are, you know, we are starting this year with a lot of initiatives. Initiatives we are doing, have uh, lectures in Brazil. We start to have lectures in Latin America. I'm here talking with you in Africa. And... Uh, and that's that's our future, you know. Have TNML, you know, machine learn apply to very thin devices to embed a device all over the world. This is the future, you know. If the IoT, you know, could took the information from billions of uh, 
of devices, you know, and send to the cloud, let's say, to process that their data we're doing with the TinML is took all that, uh, you know, information, you know, and uh, using at the same place where the data is generated to create knowledge there in that part. Thanks a lot and stay safe. Bye.